going to see how it goes. I'm just going to try to dump this in. <sighs> okay. Hey everyone, Dave here, and today we're making the world's best apple cider. You know, fall is in the air, and I thought it might be good to make some apple cider. I've never made apple cider, but I figured it's probably not too hard, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, I've definitely never made it from scratch. I have had apple cider where you like just buy the cider at the store and put it into like a thing and heat it up. I've had that, but never before have I done this all from scratch, and it actually is a pretty long recipe. I think it's gonna be easy, but it just takes a long time to prepare. But I imagine the house is gonna smell really good while I do it. So I'm gonna look up on Google, like we always do, world's best apple cider recipe. We're gonna cook the first recommendation we get from Google, and we're gonna see if it really is the best apple cider we've ever had. I have had homemade apple cider before, I just haven't made it myself, and it's usually really, really good. So let's see how this stacks up. All right, so I've looked up the world's best apple cider, and the first recipe that pops up, because there's a couple of like articles that say top 10 recipes, things like that, I usually just go down to the first real recipe I see, and that is coming from Delish, the website called Delish. It's called Homemade Apple Cider, and it's got a really good rating too. It says it only takes 10 minutes of preparation, but three hours and 15 minutes to cook. So let's get started. Okay, so first let's talk with the, talk with the ingredients? Start with, well, yeah, let's talk with them. Hello, ingredient, how are you? Now, start with the ingredients. We need an orange, this one's enormous, uh, and 10 apples. Uh, it said any apple, but when I Googled on my, I was at the grocery store and I Googled best apples for apple cider, and it said Gala, G-A-L-A. So I grabbed 10 Gala apples. Actually, I think I grabbed 12, so we'd have some extra if my kids wanted an apple. You also need, and this is where it gets like kind of expensive because this isn't the kind of spice you normally, or at least I normally have in my house. Uh, cinnamon sticks, like actually unground cinnamon. Whole cloves, which actually I did have, which is cool. Nutmeg, like a full on nutmeg. And allspice, full cloves, is that cloves? I'm actually confused by this, I'll be honest, because I always thought allspice was a mixture of a bunch of spices. It's called allspice after all. But it seems like it's actually some sort of naturally growing thing. Herb? Vegetable? I don't know. What is, what is allspice? Hold on, let me look at the back. The name says it all. A combination of aromatic flavors including cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Oh, so this is multiple things, but how come it looks like it naturally grows? Let me know guys in the comments how the heck allspice comes into existence. So those are ingredients. Let's actually get started and cook this thing. I have this fancy pot. I got an estate sale. Le Creuset. Le Cre Cross it, la crisquette. Anyways, I thought it was kind of nice looking, so that's what we'll be using. And it should be pretty good, honestly. I'm excited about using this. My first time, it was used when I bought it, but I cleaned it up really good and I'm excited to use it. Now this says in a large stock pot over medium heat to add the apples, the orange, the spices, and the brown sugar. Ooh, we need brown sugar. Let me get that too. All right. Here's some brown sugar. So I've got that too. I've got a whole mess in front of me. Okay, so in regards to the preparation, what we're supposed to do is we're gonna quarter the apple. So it says 10 apples quartered. That means fourths. So I'm just gonna, that's actually pretty easy. And I was, you know, when I was looking up this recipe, I was concerned because I was like, what about the seeds? Do I need to cut this part back or something like that? But from what I saw in the pictures, it doesn't look like you need to because you're not actually gonna eat the chunks. You're gonna strain it at the end. So we're just gonna, you know, cut up these apples, 10 of them, and we're gonna put them in this pot. And if you wanna see me eat a whole potato, ooh, I gotta make sure I take off the sticker though. I didn't take off the sticker yet. I did on this one. Um, if you wanna see me eat a raw potato, make sure you check out the world's best mashed potato recipe, cause I did that. Oh, and if you didn't notice, look, I put out some like Halloween, like fall stuff too, because you know, I'm just fancy like that. Two, uh, there's another sticker. Remove the stickers, guys, because you don't really wanna be eating stickers. But yeah, you don't need to worry about the seeds, you don't need to worry about the core. I was thinking I would have to core them and maybe peel them, but according to everything I can find online, you can just take the apple as it is and just cut it up like this. And this, since it's gonna be a long recipe, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll start cooking this, get it simmering, and then while it simmers, I'll work on some other recipe videos, because I had a couple I wanted to record today. So that's kind of my thought. But yeah, so this is pretty simple. Like I said, the steps are gonna be easy and I think it's kind of cool because it's gonna make like a nice smell in the house. There's gonna be a reward at the end. You know, the reward, the reward being the apple cider. I remember there used to be a harvest festival in my town growing up and we'd go every year just for the apple cider and they made it like this. Like it wasn't just heated up sugary apple juice. It was legitimately in the pot with all the apples and stuff like that. So 
definitely brings back some childhood memories, without a doubt. Now, and to question like, what's gonna make this the world's best apple cider? I mean, it must be this mix of spices. That's why people like it so much. Like I said, the reviews are really good, stuff like that. So I'm feeling good about it. The only thing I feel like it could be missing, and I don't know why this is in my brain, as I point to my brain with a knife, really smart, is caramel. For some reason, I feel like at some point in my life, I've had apple cider with some sort of caramel included. Maybe I'm thinking like whipped cream with caramel drizzle. Oh, that's so good. Maybe, maybe we should go buy some of that. That would be cool for the picture too. Like a caramel drizzle on top of, you know what I'm thinking of, I think, is Starbucks. At Starbucks, I used to get the uh, caramel apple cider and the caramel apple cider at Starbucks would have whipped cream and caramel sauce on it. But it wasn't very good apple cider, but with all that together, it was pretty good. Okay, so that was our last apple. So we put all the apples in here. I've even got the stems in there. I don't think it matters. It says in this over medium heat, you had the apples and the oranges. So as far as the oranges goes, it just says one orange halved. Now this is such an enormous orange. The thing looks like a grapefruit. Check it out. It's ridiculous, but I don't know. It's an orange. Put it in there. <laughs> now we gotta add our spices. So with the spices, we need four cinnamon sticks. It's gonna be easy to measure, right? Just, oh, okay, guess I can't open that. I'll do it this way. <laughs> One. So what do you think? You think it's gonna smell good in here? I remember my wife used to do some mix of this sort of stuff, like just random spices in a pan uh, on the stove top, just to make the house smell good. So we got our cinnamon, put it over there so I don't forget I already added it. These are my extra apples, so I'll set these aside. I mean, the question has to be asked, what's a better use of 10 apples? Apple cider or apple pie? It's probably apple pie, right? Let me get my teaspoon. Okay, so I'm gonna get a teaspoon, one TSP, and I'm gonna add whole cloves. These smell interesting. I don't know, I kinda like them, but I kinda hate them. It's a weird kinda smell. So this is what whole cloves look like. I'll do a heaping teaspoon. Look, I'll show it close to the camera. That's gonna take a lot of editing for nothing. Anyways, there you go. Teaspoon of whole cloves into the pot and then a teaspoon of allspice as well, which is this stuff here. And like I said, I put it over there so I don't mix it up. Ooh, that's aromatic as well, word of the day. There you go. There's my one teaspoon of allspice. That's what I'm talking about. Like if it's multiple things, why does it look like it just grows out of the ground? I don't know, maybe not out of the ground. I know nothing, I know nothing. One nutmeg, a whole nutmeg. So no measuring required, just grab a nutmeg. I'll grab the biggest one, you know, for the most flavor. Hey, they're gluten-free. <laughs> Can you just eat these? I'm not gonna try, maybe I should. Should I try, guys? Should I just eat a nutmeg? I'm not going to. And then I will add one quarter cup. This is a one quarter coop, coop, quarter coop. It's like a chicken coop, cup measure. And we're going to put that in there as well. And then we're gonna cover it with water. That's what's next. Is it packed? It is packed. So packed means you squish it down. So it's like that and add it in there. Okay, so here's all our stuff that is going to be in our apple cider. This is for a drink, guys. It's kind of wasteful. I'll be honest, kind of wasteful for a drink to have that much stuff in there. I could have made an apple pie, some orange juice, some cinnamon cigars. I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna cover this with water up to two inches above it, which is literally the top of the pan. So maybe we won't do a full two inches. I don't know. Let's do this. All right, so now we're adding the water and I'm just adding it straight from my sink. Uh, basically till it says, again, it says two inches above the top of the fruits, but I don't think we're gonna be able to get that much. So we're just gonna fill it right to the top of this orange, cause that'll be two inches above everything else. This orange is just enormous. Oh, and look, it's all floating too. So it's kind of irrelevant. Go back down apples. Whatever, we're just gonna fill it mostly to the top. I think right there is probably good. And then we gotta put it on the stove. Okay, it's now on the stove. So it says bring to a boil and then reduce heat and simmer covered for two hours. So let's get it up to a boil and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got that on high heat. What we gotta do is we gotta get it up to a boil. Once it boils, we turn the heat down to a simmer. Then we put this nice fancy cover on it and we cook it for two hours, just leave it be. And while that happens, I'll cook some other recipes. So don't be surprised if you see that blue pot in future recipes just sitting there cooking because you'll know if you're paying attention what's going on in there. Some delicious hot apple cider, getting ready for fall. Really excited about it. Bring on the harvest festival. All right, so you can see this uh, apple cider is starting to bubble a little bit. It's not like fully boiling. I'm gonna give it like another couple minutes. I'd say it's been on there for like seven minutes, uh, kind of getting up to temperature. Once it starts to boil, we'll bring the heat down, we'll put the lid on and we'll let it sit. One thing I was thinking about with this apple cider is however much water you put in there, it's like basically how much apple cider you're getting out. So if you use the bigger pot, you'd potentially get more apple cider, but it would be less concentrated. So 
Interesting thought. What do you guys think? Is this pretty much boiling at this point? You can see there's like definitely water. Ooh, play with the apples. They definitely float up too. But there's definitely water that's hot enough to bubble. So I would assume this is considered boiling, but interested in your thoughts. Maybe I'll give it another minute, but I need to get, I need to get on with my life and put the lid on. I'm like watching it. What do they say? Watch pot never boils. All right, our cider is officially boiling. I'm going to bring down the temperature, put this lid on, and we shall come back to it in a few hours. Put it down to like a medium, I think. As you can see, it's a nice rolling boil. Put the lid on and get on with our lives. I'm going to set the timer for two hours and we'll be back. All right, guys. So it's been two hours since we started simmering the, what's it called? The cider. And the next step after that don't mind my mess. I don't know. I got stuff in front of me. Hold on. Anyways, we've got a next step. The next step is to go over there and pull out the oranges and mash the apples. So that's what we're going to do next. So first of all, let's do the reveal. Let's take a look at how it looks. A look at how it looks. Interesting. Yeah, let's check it out. It's bright outside, so hopefully that doesn't mess up my camera too much. But yeah, let's do the big reveal. Let's see. Hopefully this looks different. Oh yeah, that looks different. Would you agree? That looks definitely different. The apples have like swollen. Oh yeah, they're really soft now. The oranges are what we're supposed to pull out. So we will do that. Look at that. The orange just like melts under the strength of the tong here. Not the thong, the tong. So yeah, there's your, <laughs> what's left of your oranges. Kind of interesting. And our next step is to crush the apples. And I'm using this little um, potato masher thingy. We're just gonna go in here and there's better ones. Like the one I saw them using on this recipe was like really wide and circular. I think that would be preferred to this weird little potato masher I'm using, but this'll do the trick. It's gonna have to. And we're just gonna go in there and we're just gonna squish down these potatoes. I'm leaving it on the heat. Uh, it doesn't say not to, so I figure why not? Just leave it on there and just squish it. You can see in there the cloves and the cinna sticks, <laughs> cinnamon sticks. And yeah, it's crushing really easy, just like potatoes. Which makes sense because the potato is like when I ate it raw, it reminded me of an apple. So it all lines up perfectly. Now all this chunky stuff is not gonna be consumed. We're gonna strain this at the end, but it still has quite a while to go anyways. I think it's got another hour that it's gotta cook. But for now we just have to, like I said, squish up all the apples. I'll try to get them as squished as possible. It is interesting that the skins are kind of floating around. Shouldn't matter, really shouldn't matter. Although you could skin it. I feel like the skin probably has a lot of flavor, so. I don't know guys, how do you think it looks so far? It certainly smells like fall in here. It's very aromatic and delicious smelling. Makes me want like an apple pie or a cruller or some sort of apple-y delight. All right, so now that that's all mashed, I'm gonna put our lid back on and just double check the instructions. Yeah, so it just says return to a simmer, put the lid back on for one more hour. So basically we're gonna let it go one more hour and we'll be back. Okay, so it has been three total hours since we started this apple cider and we're about to actually try it and see if it's the world's best. Let's pull it off the stove. It has just been simmering there for the last hour uncovered. As you know, we did two hours covered, one hour uncovered. And yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty good. Now, oh, you know what? I'm going to keep kneading these. So the next step is to strain it. So you see all the chunks in there? That's not part of what you drink. What you drink is just the liquid. So here's what I've done. I've gotten this pan and I put this thingy in there, which is some sort of strainer. I think it's for like a Instapot or something, but it'll do the trick. And I'm just going to see how it goes. I'm just going to try to dump this in. <sighs> okay, it's really heavy and I kind of got it everywhere. So... <laughs> So far, so good. Let's try again. Eh. Okay. All right. Is it working? I think it's working, but it's getting all over me. All right. Well, <laughs> there's a little handle on this thing. I'm just gonna kind of shake it out. Get all the liquid out of there. I mean, there's still a lot of liquid. I don't want to waste it. You see that? There's still a lot of liquid in there. Wonder if I could use a spoon. Although, do we really need to? Like, it's enough already. Just seeing how much came out. Yeah, there's still some in there. Some sort of liquid. Let's set this aside. I might try to maximize the amount I get out of that in a minute here. But I had that sitting on that. Okay, I made a mess. Let me get a paper towel. All right, so let's try to pour some in. And again, I'm not really sure like the best way to do this. I'm gonna try to get it into a cup. This is not that much liquid for the amount of time we've spent. But there it is. <laughs> 
three hours later. And uh, it looks hot enough to burn my mouth, so that could be interesting. So there we go, you can see it. It smells good. Should we try it? I'm gonna burn my mouth. Hmm, I did not burn my mouth. Mmm, that is very good though. Very good. Let me try a little more. Ah. Definitely feels like the holiday season. Fall is here. Fall has sprung. What is that? Oh, that's this thing. Now, while we were cooking, we went and we got the two ingredients that Starbucks adds. Because why not? Okay, caramel sauce and whipped cream. So let's try this. Oof. We're really gonna make it to the next level of healthy. You ready for this? The whipped cream, the caramel sauce. That whipped cream's gonna melt super fast. All right, now let's try it with the caramel. Mmm. <laughs> now that, that is good. Ah. You need it. This is crucial, guys. Let me get a paper towel. Ah, the combination of the apple cider with the caramel and the, the whipped cream. Mm. Next level. Like hitting like the most nostalgic part of my brain too. Mm. That is delicious. So that is the best apple cider I've ever had. Without the caramel, without the whipped cream, maybe not. Maybe like an eight out of 10 without it. 10 out of 10 with it. So definitely make sure you get these two if you really want to do fall right and have the best possible apple cider. Let me get some for Callie. She was excited about this, so I'm gonna let her try it on camera. Although she was saying she wanted it cold, so I don't know. Do you want caramel sauce on it? Yes, where's Eli? He's playing a game. Eli. All right, here, Cal. It's really hot though. Do you know how to eat a hot drink or drink a hot drink without hurting yourself? This one's fine. This one? Dude, sip it. You just got to do like a sip, okay? Like this. Can we do it with them? Mm -hmm. Just a little sip. Don't drink it. Just pull it in like that. It's hot, yeah. I don't think you got any of the caramel though, did you? No, nothing. Nothing. Let's do it in a spoon. I think that's a safer way for you to try it. Then you get kind of everything on the spoonful and you can blow on it. There you go. Try that. Sip it. Like that. It's better with this. Yeah, it makes a difference, it. right? <laughs> You're gonna mix it in, that's a good idea. Okay. Add some extra caramel. No, well. <laughs> no, it makes it better. It's all pure sugar. Okay, so what do you think? It's okay. Delicious? It's okay. I love it. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell so you know when my new episodes come out and we'll see you next time for another world's best recipe.